excited to be talking to you tonight. Listen, this is April, right? The month of April. Absolutely. And we're doing something different. We have announced that we're starting an actual Couples Academy daily show. And so the daily show consists of five separate segments on five different days. So Sunday nights at 9 p.m. is our relationship Q&A. And that's an opportunity for us to answer any questions that you may have. Now, people have been sending us emails and text messages and inboxes with all types of questions. And what we're going to do is we're going to start out with two. Um, but if you have a question, I want you to be free to post that question in the thread. Or if it's a private question and you don't feel comfortable because you don't want people to know who you are, you can simply inbox me or Danielle, either one of us. Uh, and we will look through that inbox and read your question. And so we're excited about it because it's one thing if we come with our own prepared script, but it's another thing if we meet you where you're at by answering the question that's on your heart, because maybe that can make the difference between where you are and ultimate happiness that you'll face, right? Absolutely. Um, make sure you answer your, ask your questions because, you know, sometimes you feel shy about asking questions. You know, we might know you slightly and you might not want to ask, ask for a friend if you need to. That always works. But get your questions asked because we're here for about how long are we going to be here? 30 for? minutes. About 30 minutes to answer all the questions that you have, everything that's been lingering in your mind and that you've been wanting to know. This is your time to get those answers. So go ahead and put those messages in the text. Actually, it's easier for us if you go ahead and put it in the Couples Academy thread. But like Hassani said, if you want to keep it private, go ahead and personally inbox us and we'll respond. And we want you to share this video. Listen, if you're watching right now, share this to your page. Share this in your groups. Share this anywhere you can because somebody can benefit from this information. Like the video. Subscribe you know, to the notifications that come through so that you're a regular part of our audience. All right, question number one. I saw the video from Sunday and I loved everything that you and your wife talked about. I just turned 21 uh, and I have a baby girl that, who just turned one. Um, I was with her dad on and off since my freshman year of high school and we just recently broke up after five months uh, due to relationships being very healthy. There was arguments, there was emotional and physical abuse. I don't know what it's like to really be in a healthy relationship because I never saw one growing up because I was raised by just my mother. I just want to be happy. So my question is, am I uh, too young to really want to date and be serious and find someone who will treat me like a queen and vice versa? Or am I just afraid to not be alone? First of all, I want to thank you for the question. I think it's a great question. This is what I would say. The question is, are you too young to begin dating seriously? Well, I think you passed that threshold because number one, you're 21 and you have a child. So you've been in a relationship for quite some time. So I don't think age is the issue here. But what did stand out is the fact that you're 21 years old and you've been with this individual since you were in the ninth grade or freshman in high school. What is that, 13? That's a long time. 13, That's all I know. That's a lot of years. That's like seven years. <laughs> yes. So this is the person who you've been with for basically all of your life <laughs> since you started dating. Mm -hmm. I would not rush into a relationship now. I don't think that you know enough about yourself. Exactly what I was there it is. I, I think people race out of one relationship and race into another and haven't discovered who they are and they haven't embraced their season of singleness. And I always say that there's a difference between being single and separate. Mm -hmm. So if Danielle and I say got divorced today and five months from now, yes, we're physically separate, but we're not single yet. Why? Because if my heart is still with her, if my mind is still on her, you know, if I still have <laughs> articles and things of that nature in the home that that, that remind me of her, if yeah. I'm still dreaming about her, then I'm physically separate but not single yet. So it's not until after a breakup, you go through a singleness of heart and a singleness of mind yeah. and you purge yourself of that individual. If you're a female, you may need to go through a hetox, getting that man out of your system. If you're a male, you may need to go through a she-tox, getting that woman out of your system. Because if you don't do that, what's going to happen is you're going to do one of two things. You're going to enter into a relational menage a trois because you're going to take your past partners with you everywhere you go in your present relationships. So either you're bitter, you're frustrated, you're mad with what your ex did to you, and you carry that bitterness into your relationship, and you wind up holding your present partner hostage to past situations because you haven't healed from them, or you're still in love and enamored with your ex, bring that passion into your relationship. So now your heart is split, your mind is split, you can't quite give all to your partner because you're still all confused about who you love and what you're looking for. And so you're not whole and complete. 
And once you've taken the time to be by yourself and master the relationship with yourself and with your God, then and only then are you ready for another relationship. I mean, I would just add to that, <clears throat> that as women, anybody, we grow, we change. Our relationships are cyclical. And so the person that you were 13 something years ago, you really are not the same person right now. Like really, you are not the same person. Don't you know that the cells of your body regenerate every seven years? You are really physically a brand new person. That's true. You're thinking different, you've learned, you've grown, your body looks different, your mind is different, you've experienced different things, and you are a different person completely. And so, you know, this is one of the major struggles in relationships anyway. Because in relationships, because we have married and become one person, a lot of times you lose yourself in that person. And then when you start to find your, your independence again and your autonomy again, the other person doesn't know what the heck is going on. So they think the relationship is crumbling when you're just discovering who you are and trying to find you. And so I would say that this is the perfect time. And this might have been one of the major issues that kind of separated you, really, because you know, in the, in, the, in the relationship when things change, people always say, you changed. You used to be this, and now you're this. You used to look like this, and now you're that. Well, that's right, I changed. Thank God I changed. Change is good. Change means I'm growing. Everything is constantly changing. And what I would say is that if you have this time by yourself, this is the perfect time to really honor yourself and honor who you are and really discover and dig, dig deep and find out who you really are. What do you like? Where do you want to go? What food do you want to eat? You know, a lot of times we eat the way that our spouse eat. What do you want to eat? Where do you want to go? What things do you want to accomplish? And when you discover that, you will discover a, a sense of empowerment that will really take you to the next level in life. And that doesn't necessarily mean another relationship. There's more to life than just relationships. So focus on those other things. You've had about 13 years of relationship. Now it's time to focus on something Yes, else. master the relationship with yourself. Travel, read a book, discover mm -hmm. something. Know your likes and your dislikes. So once you become whole, now you can do whatever you want to do because you're in a better position. Great question. Mm -hmm. All right, we have another question. And now listen, if you're, if you're watching, inbox us or... Yes. Post your question in the thread. We're here to answer that. Hey, right. Shondell. Hey, Troy. Good hey to see guys, you guys. Hey, guys. Good to see you. The next question. How do you handle when your husband is not meeting your emotional needs? There's more of a focus on taking care of home and ministry than the marriage. So, in essence, there's no balance. Mm, I think that balance is key. Obviously, balance is key. If there's no balance and there's all kinds of turmoil... Um, when you say, when, when the person says more focus on the family and ministry and no focus on a relationship, it sounds like this person is all about everything else except for his relationship. And I think that that speaks to probably some needs that we have no idea what they are, but counseling is definitely a good place to start. I feel like a lot of times when re relationships are not balanced and we're out of line with one another, we tend to focus on other things. It's a distraction. You know, this is a very dangerous place to be because those distractions can also be other people, other That's men, right. other women. So I think it's really a good time to start honing in and finding someone you could talk to. Come to Couples Academy. Tune in every week. is a great place for both of you to start. And then the other question is, you know, you said that he's not meeting your emotional needs. <clears throat> Does he know what your emotional needs are? You know, there's a phenomenal book by Dr. Willard Harley called His Needs, Her Needs. And it talks about the top five emotional needs of men in the top five emotional needs of women. And so the question becomes, are you two having the right conversations that are non-emotional? In essence, they're not so fueled with passion and anger and frustration that they're so caught up in your tone that they can't hear the content of what you're saying. So have you had conversations where you've clearly expressed what your needs are? Because I'm going to just be honest. Men, we can't read minds. Women can't either. Can't? And just because... No, you can't. And I can't. <laughs> no, I said you can't. No. And just because we've been married for 10 years, a lot of people are just on autopilot. A lot of people are just, you know, on GPS. So they're not actively involved in their journey. They just push a button, check the destination, and sit back and cruise. So they have no clue about what your needs are because they haven't understood that, you know what? In life, we change. We go through seasons. We go through transitions. And who you were 10 years ago is not who you are today. So I've got to rediscover you all over again. And if you two haven't had those type of conversations, because a lot of us have surface conversations, he may not know what your emotional needs are. Now, if you have shared with him what your emotional needs are, check the delivery. 
check the timing, the place, the location, because sometimes the right setting will allow that message to be more palatable. And so I think it's important to do that. And then understand in terms of this man who's committing more to, say, ministry, more to the home in terms of, I guess, financial responsibilities, but not giving you what you need. A lot of us as men, unfortunately, are very one dimensional. And so when you think about men and what we believe manhood is, you know, at the end of the day, it's about providing for the family. It's about bringing a check home. And we think once we've done that, we're good. So we've accomplished everything that we were set out to accomplish as a man. But that is just one faction of manhood. Manhood implies so many different other things. You know, I think that ultimately we don't understand that we're spirit, soul, and body. So there are three aspects of us. And a lot of men have a problem tapping into their emotions. So if I can't tap into my own emotions, it's going to be hard to meet the emotional need or connect emotionally with my spouse. And so men have to develop a better understanding of themselves and stop always living from the outside in, meaning the external, the physical, but begin living from the inside out so that they can be the person that they need to be so that they can show up in the relationship the way they need to show yeah, up. Yeah, say something. That's all. Just say <laughs> something, men. Because we we are always talking and we want to know. And all we're doing is sitting there and we're perceiving and we're reading and we're trying to figure out what is going on. And if you would just pause and say something, that would alleviate mm-hmm. a lot of stress for women. Like, seriously. I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. And But I think for a lot of men, it's about sharing things in a safe environment. A lot of times men feel beat up. They feel like they're going to be, uh, I don't know, cut off, told off, convinced that they're wrong, nothing they do is right. And a lot of men just easily shut down because men and women communicate very differently. Mm-hmm. You know, generally speaking, women talk in what paragraphs, men talk in bullet points. So there's a disconnect right there. So we're trying to get things out of each other and we're struggling to do it. And because we become so frustrated, we kind of venture off into our own world. And so that's why so many of us participate in what we call physical proximity. We're physically in, in, in close proximity of one another, but we're already emotionally, spiritually, and in every other way tuned out. Mm. And so if you don't learn how to reconnect, it's going to be hard to meet each other's emotional needs. Well, this is getting deep. Uh, Hassan is going deep on us. And I want you guys to start put, sending in questions. We are here to answer your questions. So go ahead and put them in the chat, and we will answer those for you. Hassan, what's the next question? I have another question. How do you, ha- how do you handle... When your spouse, no sexual desire, I'm trying to understand how she's wording this. How do you handle it when your spouse has no sexual desire due to financial strains in the relationship? Whoa! Can we get bells for this show? (laughs) The air horn, that's like the air horn right there. (laughs) Because that, just hearing that makes me think it's a man asking, what, what do you do when your wife has no sexual interest because I am broke? Actually, it was a woman. Get out! Yes. Okay, I'm wrong, but I'm going to answer from a woman's perspective. Okay. okay. Because as a woman, I can only answer from a woman's perspective. Perspective. We need to feel secure. And Hassani and I have gone through that struggle as entrepreneurs with little babies. Hassani's all around traveling, and we are struggling, and I'm not feeling it. I am feeling in not secure, not safe, not knowing what's up, not knowing what's down, you know? And that literally turns off the libido. Now, you're going to have to answer to this part of it because I don't know a man that is turned off from sex by anything. <laughs> so, you oh, have wait a minute, to answer wait. that. <laughs> Men, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, men, that's extreme, but that's I'm just extreme. saying, that's at the extreme. end of the day, men want sex. I mean, that's what we need. It's right. a need for us. It's right. a physical need. So that, so, ra- that raises red flags for me, personally, we, we, when I hear that. We have a higher tolerance level, so we could deal with a whole lot more and still engage physically with our spouses than, say, a woman, because as you say, women are more emotional, right? So if yes. I'm approaching her, she's autom- You know, it's just like, I, I share this all the time. When a woman touches a man, touch me. That sensation immediately goes to the genitalia area. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Really? Yeah. For the most part, we're talking marriage, oh, spouse. Okay. When a man, a husband touches a woman, that sensation goes all the way up to her, her emotional yes, headquarters. Yes, it does. And she starts what thinking about want? what does he want? <laughs> how did he treat me? You know, did, did he? How did he talk to me this week? Are the bills paid? She's thinking about all these different yes, things. So true. And and if he gets a green light, then that physical sensation goes right back down to her genitalia. She's ready to go. But if it gets a red light, it's a problem. So women are wired differently. And so it's important that emotional needs are met. 
Because at the end of the day, if we're meeting those emotional needs, then I would imagine that desire for sexual fulfillment Str- increases. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that women are always on the receiving end. I think it's important that both partners begin to uh, initiate certain things in order to meet the needs of their so spouse. So here's a question. Cause, so we're not really answering the question because you're saying that that's a woman. And we don't know if she's talking about herself. We're assuming that she's talking about her spouse. So that means that it's the man who is not sexually interested because the finances are not right. Right. So if, if I'm wired financially and things are out of line or things are out of order, it may cause me to look at you different or have less of a desire for you because if my need, for instance, going back to the five love languages, if my love language is acts of service, that means I need you to do something. I need you to help provide, help manage the funds. And if you don't do that, I'm turned off. So I, you know, I think it can work both ways. And so I think it's important (laughs) that couples learn how to become bilingual. They, you know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, love what God loves and hate what God hates. There's a principle in that. And I think it's important in a relationship to consider what it is that's truly important to your spouse. Begin to love what they love. Begin to hate what they hate so that you're on the same side. I think so many couples are waging war against each other and in constant conflict with one another, not realizing that they're there to complete each other, not to compete with one another. So we don't have to compete for needs. We don't have to compete for wants. If we learn how to meet each other's needs, we both win. I agree. Absolutely. Thank you, Tamika. She said, good analogy, true, and never thought of it that way. Let me just say this one thing. This is so powerful. I share this with my clients all the time. And if you can get this, I think it'll make a major difference in your relationship. There's something called the law of reciprocal altruism. I know it's a long term, but it's called the law of reciprocal altruism. And according to this law, organism A and organism B exist. Now, if organism A contributes to the life and vitality of organism B, if it represents the loss of its own life and vitality because it's giving it up to organism B, it will do so under the expectation that organism B will contribute to the life and vitality of organism A, even if it means the loss of its own life and vitality. So I don't mind giving up who I am, what I have, all that I have to offer, because I know that we're, all, we're operating according to the same principle. She's going to equally give to me. So when we both do that, even in our loss, we both gain, we both win. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, the opposite of the law of inverse, um, uh, uh, the the law of reciprocal altruism is the tit for tat. Well, I'm not going to do for you until you do for me. Well, what have you done for me lately? So I'm now sitting back waiting for you to do something. You're Mm -hmm. sitting back waiting for me to do something. And guess what? We both lose. So as long as we're holding on to what it is our partner needs, we both lose. When we're willing to give and to release what our partner needs, we both win if we're operating according to the same law. And that's so critically important in relationships in order for them to work. So I hope that makes sense. It does. It, 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 I, I think about how many people, how many couples actually operate that way. Like, well, I'm not going to do it unless you do it. And you did this last week, so now I'm going to do this week. And, you know, it's the whole back and forth thing. Yeah. So you really are working in opposition to one another all the time. All the time. Mm. So it's important that you begin to do that. Now, listen, send your questions in. It's so interesting because during the week we get all types of questions. Or once the show is over, we get a 1,001 questions that we could have answered in the session. But if you don't, just continue to send them in throughout the course of the week. Now, as we wrap up, I, I just want to give you a heads up of what the week is going to look like. With our new schedule, yeah. on Mondays, as you know, we have our infidelity recovery. And so that's going to be me talking to you for all those that have been impacted by infidelity. Or if you know someone, definitely get them in that Facebook Live. Then Tuesday, I believe Tuesday is Married to the Business. business. That's when we're going to be talking about couples who are in business together and how to make that business work. Even if you're a solopreneur and you're seeking a relationship, it would be great for you to tune in so that you can discover the principles of a successful copreneurship and relationship. Then on Wednesday, we're doing V Life, and this is going to be where I come and I talk to women about their virtues and helping them identify them and really dig deep, unearth the treasures within, and find out what you're really about. So I'm excited about that because I'm honestly on my own journey, and I want you guys to come along with me and share this time with me. We're I'm looking excited. forward to that. Yes. Yeah. And then on Thursday, we have a new segment called How We Do It. And so what we're going to be doing is interviewing other couples, couples in business, uh, couples in ministry. Uh, couples who are in corporate, couples who are partnered together on anything and how they make that thing work. Even 
your partnership within the realm of your relationship. So it's going to be an awesome experience where you're going to be hearing wisdom, knowledge, and skills from people all over the country from all different spaces and places in life. And so that is going to be our new weekly show. Yes. And we want you to continue to tune in. We want you to uh, click like and share this. Tell Listen, your friends. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. And your family. Listen, before you go, I need you to go to the Audacity Marriage Group. If you are not a member, join because we have all types of special information in there that people outside the group will never get. Also, like the Couples Academy page. Listen, if you like what you're hearing, we want you to get our notifications on a daily basis. But listen, guys, we want to thank you for tuning in, and we will see you on next week. Talk to you soon.